What's up guys, this is Joe. Welcome to Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife. Today I have some beautiful katana to show you. Not, I'm not showing you these katana today. I have crap, absolute crap to show you right now. It's utterly shit. That's what I'm showing you right now. Yes guys, I am showing you garbage today. I am showing you shit metal shit swords okay that's basically what i'm showing you today why am i showing you my garbage because there is a point to it if you hang around to the end and uh, i'll get to that point as uh we get to the end of the video so uh before i get started with this guys as i start trying to start my all my videos we are growing awareness for hashtag 22 a day a message to our veterans 22 veterans a day take their own lives our veterans we love you and uh Please stop, don't stop fighting the good fight. And there is a number in the description if you are in despair and you need some help. So with that, guys, um, this is my crap, okay? So where do I start with my crap? I'll show you, uh, these are my first swords, okay, that I picked up when I knew I had a passion for swords. Actually, I think I had said it on a Blade Talk and I showed you one of these swords. One of the first movies that I really started getting into swords was Conan the Barbarian, and that's going way back. And uh, the Conan sword was, uh, I was in love with it. I mean, that's where I really started getting into swords. And then I started getting into uh, Japanese uh, samurai and the ninja movies. And, you know, pretty much like everybody started, you know, with all the old 80s movies and stuff like that. Uh, but specifically the Conan sword, and I wanted something like the Conan sword. And back then they didn't really make... A reproduction of the Conan sword other than like you know out of plastic or something like that uh, so a family member and I can't even remember exactly who it was picked me up this hunk of stuff here okay this hunk of crap okay this is a um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it it's a fantasy sword a barbarian sword I mean but this thing is it's definitely a beast I mean I can't even get this thing in the hole frame of the camera i'm sure okay so do i look like arnold you know so <laughs> no so it's uh it's definitely my first sword okay it's obviously like a 440 stainless steel but i gotta tell you if you look at the hilt and the pommel and the the quinlins and the guard i mean it actually has some really nice details in there i mean some nice metal work i mean it's it, it's not a real functioning sword obviously i mean Listen, you, you take a swing at somebody with this thing, you could definitely hurt them, okay? Um, but it just, you know, wobbly, it, just, it moves a lot, it just, it's, you know, it's, it's in place, it's not coming apart, but it's definitely jiggling inside a little bit, it's not that steady, okay? And uh, I think if you kind of hit a tree with this, it's uh, definitely going to fall apart. So it's, it, it's got sentimental, uh, I, I keep this, why do I keep this crap? It was my first sword. Is the first you know steel style sword type of thing where you can hold it, it looks like a sword it kind of feels like a sword but it's not okay it's not a real functioning sword it's a it's a wall hanger basically guys okay uh i really was in love with all the details of this thing back then and this was i took pride in owning this and i says yeah look at my sword i have people come over and say hey look at my sword okay so this was literally my first sword so i have held on to this thing for about 35 years or more it's got to be probably more than that um and i've had it for that long it's been in pretty good shape i mean listen it's like a 440 stainless steel you're not going to deal about deal with rust or anything like that um i never actually hit anything with it so it's not, there's no reason for it to fall apart um i don't know where it came from it says here made in it used to say made in spain i remember it said made in spain um it was probably a pretty penny actually when uh that family member miss you family member of mine bought it I think it was my brother or something like that uh, but it was probably a pretty penny back then, but I, I love this thing. I still do. I have a lot of sentimental attachment to it as being literally my first, first sword. And uh, listen, it's definitely a beast. It's definitely a lot, you know, it's it's definitely a presence, okay, having this in your hand, okay? It's, it's pretty, but it's also pretty monstrous, okay? So uh, that's my first, first sword, okay? Now, the next thing I have here, guys, is a... This is my first iteration, my first Japanese-like, katana-like thing, okay, that I received. And I used to, when I was a kid, I used to call this my katana. Look at my katana, okay? And um, it's, it looks like a katana. It's got, like, uh, 
It's got the Fuchi ring, the collar ring. It's got the, uh, uh, the, the, the Kashira, which is the end cap. Okay, everything is tight, obviously, because it's all one piece. Uh, it's got the, some kind of a material wrap with some rubber, you know, synthetic uh, Samigawa, which is pretty much some cheap ass rubber. Um, it's got a Minuki in there. Uh, it's got some, you know, little details, a little attempted details in the Suba and all that. Uh, what's interesting is actually it's got some uh, material uh, that's wrapped around the Saya, which you really don't see actually. I never seen like a Saya wrapped around a material. You know why? Because it's it's because it's stupid. Okay, it's not practical, but it is pretty as a as if it had to be a showpiece to have like material wrapped around the, the wooden core of, of the Saya. But uh, the sword itself is just um, I, I would say this is kind of like a a short wakizashi yeah it's kind of a wakizashi bigger than a tanto smaller than a wakizashi type of thing um i've attempted to put some kind of an edge on this but um you know it's i never really could get a good edge on it it's, it's cheap 440 stainless steel actually says it 440 stainless steel you know it's it's pretty balanced on hand it doesn't rock it doesn't wiggle it's 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 pretty tight it's probably got some kind of a maybe some kind of a stick tang in, on the inside and everything but Obviously doesn't come apart, but this was physically my first katana-like thing, okay, that I would say, you know, this was my first katana, okay? I can't even call it a katana. It's a, a simulation of a katana, okay, which is kind of a showpiece. So I held on to this, again, for sentimental reasons, because this is the, my first, this is what really got me into wanting to collect katana later on and um, studying the, the Japanese arts and everything like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's a God ugly thing, but you know, back then I thought it was the prettiest thing in the world. And I used to call this my katana. So this was literally what started it all for me, guys. This was my first wakizashi slash tanto, smaller than a katana type thing, okay? So that's that. Next thing, and I had a lot of these things that I picked up from Mexico, okay? I actually, this is not even, I've had, I have a couple more things that I collected through the years that are in another home and I can't get to them, but uh, this is what's left. So I have something that I picked up as a memento, okay, with my crazy ass trips as a teenager to Cancun and there was a lot of them. Crazy nights, crazy days. So I picked this up at like a flea market shop or something like that. And back then you were able to kind of take these sorts to the airport, put them into your luggage and take them home. I think I took home like about three or four of these, you know, trinket sword things, okay, from Mexico back then. It wasn't as strict as it is, as it is now. Uh, but yeah, this came from Cancun, Mexico. It says it Cancun, Mexico. It says it also, it says Paradiso Caribiano, okay. And um, it's, uh, I don't know if you kind of call this like a Spanish, I think it's a Spanish influence, this type of sword. I would have to really look it up. I never really did, but I would think it's like Spanish influence. Again, it's not sharp. Um, you know, it's got an edge, but it's not sharp enough to cut you or anything like that. And again, it's, you know, cheap 440 stainless steel, very solid. It's, it's very balanced, okay? It doesn't wiggle, doesn't bend or anything like that. It's actually built pretty well for what it is. But this was a memento of mine, okay, from my many trips to Cancun, Mexico. And I will hold on to this for a lifetime. But it is crap, okay? Next thing... Um, this is actually pretty nice, guys. This is um, this is my first and only movie-style sword, okay? It's obviously a wall hanger, guys, okay? It's not uh, it's not a functionable sword. Has a, it's a completely dull edge, okay? Uh, probably also some kind of stainless steel, but a little bit of better quality stainless steel. This was licensed from, uh, from the movie Lord of the Rings, okay? And I'll tell you exactly what it is. You know, there's a lot of history behind this sword. Fake history, but there's history behind it. So I'll read it off because I don't want like the uh, Middle Earth police to you know be commenting and saying that you know I got something wrong. So this particular sword, okay, is uh, Anduar, A Anduril sword. It's the Anduril sword. It was from, it was uh, wielded by the King of Elsor of Ga Elsar of Gondor, okay, in which he, in the ancient battle of Middle Earth, this particular sword won the battle, but it was uh, broken in two, okay. So it stayed broken for many decades or whatever it was, okay? Aragon, who was the rightful heir to the throne of Gondor, okay, was meant to wield Andor, and that was the only way he was able to take his rightful throne to the throne of Gondor. So this sword, Anduril, which was broken and wielded 
you know, was uh, wielded back together uh, again, okay, by the elves, okay, was given to Aragon uh, in the final uh, battle on Return of the King. Where was I? So he was able to wield the sword and he was able to uh, to play, have the allegiance of the ghost arm, that ghost army, uh, the dishonored uh, soldiers. And they were able to follow him because they saw he was the rightful king because he was wielding the original Anduar, so Anduril sword of the of King Elsor of Gondor. So they know he was a rightful throne. So that he uh, they, he commanded their allegiance. So they fought with him, and they ended up helping him fight the battle for Middle Earth. Okay, so with this sword, okay, he took his rightful throne um, to the throne of Gondor. Sorry for all the boring crap. You're not into it, but I'll figure I'll give you the history of why I love this sword. So I am a big Lord of the Rings junkie, even though I don't know everything by heart. I love the movie and I wanted something, okay, to commemorate um, a movie sword to commemorate the, uh, you know, popular series. And that's basically what I picked up. It's got a nice wall plaque, as you saw. And uh, it's a really pretty sword. It's a very nice representation. It's got the writing on the blade. It's got some nice uh, details around the Quinlins and, uh, and the pommel. It's obviously not very practical because, you know, you got the rubber handle here. It should have, it should have can't come down all the way over here you know, to wield it, but it's definitely a two-handed wielded sword, okay? Um, but, you know, it's, you know, not balanced. It's, it's, it's not a practical sword, guys. I'm not going to be swinging at shit with this thing. It's not sharp to dull blade. If I swing at a tree with it, like the other one, I'm sure it'll freaking break off of the thing. But that's not what it's meant to be. It's a wall hanger. So, for sentimental reasons, because I love Lord of the Rings, okay, this is my... Uh, Lord of the Rings replica of Aragon's uh, sword, and that's why I held on to it. So, why in the world am I so showing you guys my crap, okay? As collectors, a lot of people who follow our channels and uh, content creators and the guys who uh, collect knives and swords for so many years, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that you guys have held on to through the years. It might be garbage, it might be crap, it may not work anymore, or it may have worked at one point, but it's outdated, it's falling apart. But there may be some sentimental reasons of why you're holding on to it. So, my message to you guys is, um, show me your shit, show me your crap. Let me know why you're holding on to your crap. This is my crap, show me your crap. And there may be some stories behind it. You know, maybe uh, your first knife that you picked up at a hardware store, you know, 30 years ago when you were a kid and you still have it. Or one of your first swords or maybe one of your first katana that uh, was a functioning katana, but it's pretty much garbage now where it's falling apart. But, but you're holding on to it for a reason. There's got to be a reason why us men hold on to things, okay? So there are some sentimental reasons. Yes, we ha uh, us men do have some sentimental bones in our bodies and when it comes to weaponry I, I think uh, that comes into play so let me know you know maybe it could be uh, let me know I mean if you want to put out a video you want to talk about it let me know if there's any um, anything that you guys are holding on to for sentimental reasons and uh, maybe there's a, a good story behind it and you want to talk about it or maybe not but you know what I felt like I just wanted to show you my crap and uh, a little change from showing you some really high-tech beautiful beautifully made weaponry I'll show you some of my garbage and some of the stuff that uh, started me on my passion, my obsession for collecting weaponry, collecting swords, collecting katana and all that. So uh, let me know, guys. Maybe your first knife, maybe your first machete, maybe your first, maybe uh, it may have been your first uh, buoy, Bowie, <laughs> your first sword, whatever it is. Okay, should be some interesting conversation. So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, this was hopefully a quick one. So, um, yeah, let me see, guys. Let me see your crap. This is my crap. Let me see your crap, and let me know why you're holding on to it. That's about it, guys. You guys have a fantastic day or night, depending on when you're watching this. Thanks for watching, guys, and peace out. This is Joe Lobb signing out. Take care, guys. Ciao.